just we're a little bit ahead of schedule um but my inclination is to keep going and we maybe might finish a little bit early um and on a friday afternoon i'm sure that would be very welcome um i want to introduce our next speaker who uh rita o'reilly who is uh ceo of parent line it's a national helpline for parents uh, offering support, information and guidance on all aspects of parenting. Um, before joining Parentline, uh, Rita worked in marketing with Axe Insurance and she had a job that I think I might have liked myself with the Football Association of Ireland. Um, is she here? Yes. Rita, you're very welcome. Come on up. It's up, oh, it's up there, great. Okay, well, my name is Rita O'Reilly. I work with Parentline. And before I tell you about our involvement with um, NVR, I want to tell you something about Parentline because it'll help us understand why we got involved. Um, Parentline was established about 30 years ago by a group of public health nurses. And their idea was that um, as Dublin sort of we used to have a situation where when a new baby was born, you had mammy and daddy supporting and aunties and grannies and whatever. But Dublin, and it was Dublin at the time, was expanding to a big suburban sprawl and young mothers and young babies were living out there miles away from support. So they set up parent support groups and they met once a week, which was fantastic. Except that if you were feeling miserable on Monday morning or on Tuesday morning and the group had been on Monday night, you had a whole week to go. So over time, uh, the helpline was formed. And so we came from a small local support group to a national helpline. Um, oh, the, at the moment, we're funded by Tusla. We've got one part-time paid employee, which is me, and 48 trained facilitators, volunteer facilitators. I say volunteer, and sometimes people underestimate the value of volunteers. Just because they don't get paid doesn't mean they're great. Uh, some of our volunteers are with us for 30 years since we opened and they had their initial training and ongoing training. So they're, they're a fabulous group. We talk to about 3,000 parents every year. And so since we started, that's more than 100,000 parents. So that's a lot of experience. And we would say the parent line is a barometer for what's going on for parents in Ireland. Um, Things change, you know, like actually maybe we had Barney in about eight years ago. At that time, drugs was a big deal. We actually don't get that many calls about drugs now. Uh, at the moment, it's the anger and aggression. So if you have a look at this, um, anger and aggression represents 24% of the calls. And then if you look at the um, child to parent, child abusing parent, it's 8%. So we're looking at 32% of calls between those two. It's, now, that may come about, as you were saying, because of drug use or whatever. There's, there could be an under, or possibly grand theft auto use and all of that sort of thing. Um, but we don't know what it's about, but we don't look at why it's about it. The fact is, it's happening. So, as I said, that comes to 32% of calls, which is a significant amount of concerned parents. And the thing about um, child abusing parents and anger and aggression is it's a very difficult thing to admit. You know, if your child was maybe mitching for school, you might tell somebody next door, but you definitely don't want to tell your, your neighbour or your... It's very hard to admit that your child is abusing you. It's suggesting that you're, you're not capable of being a parent. <coughs> um, so because of that, we looked around for a while to see... We could see the levels increasing over a number of years, and we looked around and found the Nonviolent Resistance Programme. It was developed by um, a man in Israel and then adapted for the Irish market, so to speak, by Declan Coogan down in Galway University. And uh, he calls it an evidence-based support for parents, which is changing lives for the better around the country. And I think we have found that. Um, so the NVR, as we call it, because Nonviolent Resistance Programme is a very long word, <laughs> um, it's a practical tool that empowers parents. And it can actually be used in many situations. Lots of the tips that p parents learn from this, or indeed that our volunteers have learned from it, they can use in many parenting situations. So what we did was we trained a team of facilitators to deliver the program. And um, there's a couple of people around the country delivering the NVR program. Most cases, it's on a group basis. 
Um, there are some one-to-one, -one, but mostly group basis. Um, but Parentline, I think, is the only one that delivers it over the phone. And the benefit of that is that a lot of parents, when they find it hard to admit that this is happening in their home, they don't have to face anybody. They can just deal with it over the phone. And we don't know who they are. We don't know what part of the country they're coming from. Um, and, um, but still, we can develop a rapport with them and get to know them. Um, as I said, it's delivered on a one-to-one -one basis and the training is, is useful all around. So the core elements of NVR, and the first thing is there's no excuse for abuse. So no matter what's going on in the child's life, it might be drugs, it might be bullying, no matter what it is, um, it doesn't excuse the child being abusive towards his parents or siblings or, or anybody really. So you start at that and don't look for, you might be understanding and sympathetic for the reasons behind the abuse, but you're not accepting the abuse. So. Um, the, the first thing about the, the programme is the parent must be committed to it, that they want to do it and they want to make changes in their household. Um, and then it's de-escalating, the, they learn de-escalating skills. It is very, very difficult if you're six foot two, 18 year old, is screaming and shouting and dropping towards you to walk away and not let on it's happening. But that's the first thing you have to learn is not to rise to it and walk away. Um, increasing parental presence. It's about being there for the child. Now, I don't mean giving them a lift to school and lift home from school and all that sort of thing, but maybe send them a text during the day, hope all went mail with the match or not asking questions because teenagers hate answering questions. And, and they can't say mm. on a text back. Um, but um, just, just reassuring them that you're there for them. You know, maybe you might even say lovely day or whatever is appropriate to you and, and that child. And just being there, maybe having the dinner ready or whatever in a casual way. Um, and then it's stepping outside the secrecy. As I said, it's very difficult to admit that this is going on in your house and uh, you're... I mean, sometimes even an 11, 12, 13 year old is being abusive towards you and you can't handle it. Um, and I suppose I should say about the abuse, it's not just physical violence, it's, it's bullying, demanding, um, ag an aggression, shouting, roaring, banging the walls, all of that sort of unpleasant behavior. And that would all be, if it's upsetting you and if you feel that, um, if the parent feels that I have no control over this, that's, that's how you define it. Um, so we, one of the steps in the programme is to tell somebody. It's usually, it's very often Nana. Nana tends to work because they, they, the kids tend to adore Nana and Granda and they're, um, they hate the thoughts that Nana or Granda would know that they were carrying on like this. Um, so it's, it's somebody that the child, and you tell the child, I'm going to tell on you. Uh, tell on you is the wrong term, but I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to let, let people know about this. But the other thing about it is it's support because sometimes this will get worse before it gets better. So that the, the parent needs support. So if there was violence escalated, there has to be somebody that the parent can call on that can help them in dealing with the whole thing. And then the family announcement. Um, it's saying, it's not focusing on the child that's being violent because it, it's about the whole family and sort of think we're not we're not having this around this house we want no more violence I'm not going to be rough I'm not going to speak to anybody like that and I expect that nobody you don't speak to one another and you don't speak to me like that and um, lowering the tone of the voice and all that uh, sort of stuff and then refusal of orders if the child is being demanding and uh, as typically comes with this you say, oh, no, it doesn't really suit me to give you a lift now. While we're saying have parental presence, we're not doing it at, on demand. And um, I'll give you a lift in an hour. Or, you know, you're just not obliging um, in the sense, or, or jumping to demands probably more than obliging. So, and then there's the reconciliation steps. Because if a child is being abusive towards a parent, it's very, very easy to forget that you love them and um, underneath it all you do. And so it's about reminding yourself, well, what did I like about this child? Or where, one of the, we have a program going on at the moment and um, f 
for the first two or three weeks and mother was saying there's nothing I like about him, nothing I like about him and our facilitator gave her a, a notebook and she said take that home and every day before you go to bed write down one thing that you like about that child and when she came back she had more than seven like she was able to write two or three things every day so she just encouraged her to focus on that and maybe feed that back to the child in a, a sort of a casual way um, so that, that's what it covers. The thing about it is it doesn't really happen in week one, two, three, or four. There's, a, there's an overlap. Um, and you might sort of look at the, the reconciliation first. You might sort of say, start thinking about how you, how you love your child first. It depends on that particular family and the circumstances, age of child and all that sort of thing. So... I'm oh, sorry, I thought I'd missed something there. Um, the, the way it works is the parent, line, the parent will call parent line saying, God, I'm a bit concerned about this. The facilitator will sort of assess the call, have a chat with the parent and sort of see, do they think an MVR is appropriate for them? If they think it's appropriate for them, they'll suggest, they'll fill them in, explain a little bit of how it works and um, send it through to admin. Um, and so then we'll set up an appointment with the parent and we would sort of try and link this family with this facilitator to try and get it to work best. And the parent then has the choice of coming into the office. It's usually once a week um, and it's usually about an hour or we'll make an appointment to ring them on Wednesday at 10 o'clock or whatever suits. Um, and then the programme will run for as long as the parent wants or needs. Um, typically it's about six weeks. We've had some people who finish up after four weeks and say, no, I think I've I'm okay after that. And some have gone on for, I think 14 or 15 has been the longest. And then the thing is that parent line is always there for the parent. Um, you know, if in three months time you think, no, this is slipping back in again, they can ring parent line, they can hook in with, with the facilitator they were dealing with, or they can speak to any facilitator. So typically um, week one, you sit down with the parent and explain the process. Um, so that it's very clear and get the commitment, set the goals, what do we want to get out of this and teach them the de-escalation skills. Uh, then at the beginning of second and subsequent weeks, you re review last week's session. Sometimes I give little homework pieces, sometimes it's, it depends on, on, on the family. You encourage them to establish a, a support network. I'm saying um, granny and granddad, it might be more than that. It might be a, a group of people. It depends on the severity. It depends on the relationship you have with people. All of that sort of thing, whatever is appropriate. And encourage them to start talking about this problem to that group and to the child and other members in the, in the family. And then week three, begin to um, increase parental presence. As I said, send the texts. Uh, maybe pick them up from school one day or whatever, as I said, suits in, in that family. Week four is the family announcement. Um, as I said, we'll have no more violence in this house or we'll have no more bad language or the language that you use in, in your house. Uh, week five is refusing orders and the strike. Um, and as I said, these will be, you might do two of these in week four and two in week, none in week six or whatever way it goes. And then you work on the act of re reconciliation. So I suppose that's when it's becoming too an end and things are beginning to look good. Um, and then week seven is the review meeting, the programme end and reassurance that parent line is always there for them. Um, so if we look at a couple of scenarios and why people might consider um, an MVR programme and what prompted them to ring parent line. Um, one, I think it's the first one that I Came, when we were trained first, the first one I came across was a social worker in um, an A and E in the hospital, um, where a mother had come in come in with a broken arm because of her daughter's violence, and the mother just felt completely and utterly hopeless. This had been going on for a good few years, and she hadn't spoken to anybody about it. And there didn't seem to be. I mean, I know with the MVR you're not meant to look for a reason for it, but in this case, there genuinely didn't seem to be any reason. She didn't. The daughter didn't seem to have any mental illness, any drug abuse, nothing, that, but she 
she broke her mother's arm. So the mother attended. Um, the father didn't come in initially, the first two or three weeks the father didn't come, but he then joined and the, the mother went from feeling absolutely hopeless to that was a really successful outcome. Um, I have to say, at the end of it, the daughter moved out. She was a 19-year-old and the mother encouraged her to move out. But she hadn't got the courage, I think, in the beginning to sort of show her the door in a nice, gentle way. Um, and this was a, a young mother and father. They were very young and they did 13 and 16-year-old boy, boys. And the 16-year-old the boy was very, very aggressive towards everybody. And they, the parents came because of the impact it was having on the 13 year old they're actually forgetting themselves but they they had no life at all because of this kid um, he was very demanding they were doing everything to please him and one of the things that came out of this one was that the um it the the facilitator asked the mom and dad to ask the two boys to scribble down what they thought was going on in their house and and the 13 year old said that he had been asked no, the 16-year-old had been asked to empty the dishwasher and wouldn't do it. So the 13-year-old, the mother said, well, you better do it because she knew she couldn't have a battle with the 16-year-old. So the 13-year-old didn't do it and he was punished. And there, it sort of became very clear that this 16-year-old was absolutely running the household and mum and dad hadn't got it in them to stand up to him. So that, um, that one had, well, so far has had a very positive outcome. Um, so... Some of the things that the parents say when they ring us up is, what will become of my child when he grows older? I cry every time he insults me. It's not right for a boy. And in both of those cases, I think that the parents aren't saying he's been aggressive or she's been aggressive. It's actually f not quite 50-50 to us. It's about 45, 55% boys and girls, slightly more boys, but there's a lot of girls um, that parents are ringing about. But um, at no stage is the parent saying, I want nothing. They're saying the words, I want nothing to do with them, but they don't mean that. Underneath it all, they're saying, I want this child to have a better life. I want to enjoy my life with him. I want things to be good. And they were constantly, cons like, as I said, she's worried about what will happen when he grows older. She's thinking about when he gets older, if he doesn't change his ways. And she's not thinking about herself at all. Um, and the other one I put there about it's not right for... Um, I pass it on. It's not right for um, a boy to treat a woman like that. Very often people say, oh, it's learned behaviour. And that, um, sure, you know, what else would he do only carry on like his dad? But in this situation, this is a very gentle dad. It wasn't learned behaviour. It was just a, for some reason, the boy was being particularly violent towards his mother. And then this one, he hasn't physically attacked me. As I said, it's not necessarily just the, the physical violence, it's the fear of, of attack and that sort of controlling behavior. Um, I'm, I'm afraid of him, but I don't want my partner involved. He's not his father and things could become more difficult. It's how it's spreading out to everybody. And very often we hear this one, um, he's verbally abusive throws furniture around, but I'm only five foot two and he's six foot. I always picture that woman, you know, it, you can just sort of sense the fear of somebody towering over you. So the parent line facilitators, after years and years and years of experience, <coughs> say regular, what struck me was the amount of sympathy mother had for her son and how she was prepared to accept his unacceptable behaviour because she felt gu guilty that her relationship with his father broke down. The parents are sort of making excuses all the time. We let it happen. Sure, I'm half to blame, taking on the responsibility. And I suppose the whole thing about the NVR is it's not your problem. It, well, it's your problem, but it's not your fault that the, um, it is the child and that he's the person or she's the person that has to change their ways. Um, I can't imagine how difficult her life is having to deal with that level of violence and aggression. And I thought this one was great. When I started with Parent Line, we were concerned about child safety. Now we're concerned about the parents. Like, as I said, originally we were concerned about mothers being isolated and um, maybe harming themselves or their child. Now it's completely flipped. 
We did get the other calls as well, but uh, it's just... So after the MVRs, just to give you a couple of examples of what um, parents have said, I saw a difference after one session. That was actually the, the one I spoke about, the 13 and the 16-year-old boys. That woman, I made an administrative slip and rang her by mistake when I thought I was ringing someone else. And she said, um, oh, I'm glad you rang. She said, I cannot believe, it's only four days since I was in there, and I cannot believe the change in our house already. So it was almost that immediate, but that was about her developing the confidence. And it was good to know I'm not alone. Again, as I said, living in a house um, like that with somebody towering over you and being aggressive to you, you don't know where to turn. So they felt I can speak to somebody and my home is a happier place. So I would think good outcome all around. Um, now, one thing I don't have a slide for because it only came up yesterday. We are doing training in MBR on the 30th of November and the 1st of December. And um, we're going to open it out to other organisations. If anybody was interested, please email me at rita at parentline.ie is probably the best one to get it. It's two days and it's Declan Coogan from Galway University that's delivering the training. And it, as I said, it's a two day training. But after that, there's usually a, a follow up, one or two day follow up after that. Um, I don't know when that'll be. That'll be decided on, on the day. And it's a hundred euro f for the two day. No, it'd be for staff, people who work with parents. Now, I'm assuming all of you have some bit of experience in, in this world. It, you know, like a, a parent or a, um, somebody who isn't working in this world wouldn't walk in off the street. It wouldn't work for them. You'd have to have some sort of background in it. But if you are interested in it, and it'll all happen in Carmichael Centre, which is North Brunswick Street. Um, so as I said, if you just email me, rita at parentline.ie, and um, I'll give you all the details. 100 euro for the two days and that includes your lunch and your coffee so it's not too bad <laughs> so that's all i have to say unless anybody has any questions thank you, thank you.